Hello everyone and welcome to Explorations in Aircraft Design in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. This is Realism Overhaul Sandbox and what you see here is of course a Concorde but not quite. The engines are different. Instead of the normal Rolls-Royce Snecma engines, I have placed the engines from the SR-71 Blackbird. And so these are more powerful engines. The Concorde, of course, has four of them, rather than two on the SR-71. And we're going to see what kind of performance we're going to get out of them. Now, everything else except for the engine swap is as accurate as I could get for the Concorde. It's dry weight, the location of the fuel tanks, uh, the bumper wheel, I put the bumper wheel on. Uh, everything else, the dimension should be correct. And so that's the main difference, but it doesn't quite fly the same, especially on takeoff from the runway. So you'll note that we're not carrying a full fuel payload, uh, even though, you know, it's got the correct fuel tanks. And that's because I couldn't get it off the runway with that fuel. I think the wings aren't providing the correct amount of lift. So we've got that problem, but that's not going to be a huge problem in terms of what we're trying to do, which is to try and cross the Atlantic. Now this is partly inspired by Elon Musk's presentation of the ITS and the whole suborbital hop thing with the I, uh, well ITS BFR or whatever they want to call it. And I thought that was sort of a ridiculous idea because it's phenomenally wasteful. We have very fast ways of getting across oceans and long distances without, you know, with reusable craft, which the, Con the Concorde was. We just need to like refit it with more powerful engines if you really want to go fast. There are hypersonic plane possibilities. So this is a test to see how far I can push this. It should go much faster than the Mach 2 of the Concorde, of course. These are more powerful engines. But they're also more gas-guzzling engines. The reason why these wouldn't be used on a Concorde is the Concorde's original engines were very efficient. Uh, these are not. And so that's the rub. Can we go fast enough to cross the Atlantic without running out of fuel, considering that we're carrying a lighter fuel payload than we normally would, a fuel load, I just say fuel load, and so that's the problem. There are two other reasons why they wouldn't use these engines. First of all, they're really loud, and so it wouldn't be a very good experience for the passengers. Uh, these were not designed with passenger comfort in mind. And also, uh, pushing the craft to the speeds that I'm pushing it to, which is well past Mach 3 as you can see, would not be great with the material technology that they had on the original Concorde. Uh, it would heat up too much. You could even see some of the heat going on the nose uh, in certain views. But uh, with modern material technology, maybe we could make it work and maybe we could protect the cabin properly without worrying about it at high velocities. So that's my hope. That's just a supposition that we have. The dry mass of this is not changed from the Concorde. I'm playing around with curb cam right there. I, I really need to learn how to use that. Uh, it would make for some really awesome shots. But I, I'm not very good at the whole animating a camera thing. I'm, I'm good at getting good shots, you know, still shots. And I'm all right with animation when it comes to like limbs, for instance. But moving the camera around for some reason, it's always a messy thing for me. Anyway, that's a completely side issue. As you can see, about 11 minutes into flight, I'm fairly confident of its stability. I'm using this little autopilot mod, which that is just on fly-by-wire mode. I can still control it. It's not really uh, holding an altitude or a speed or anything right now. Uh, it's just uh, holding wherever I left it. And it's doing a really good job of that. And you can see we're approaching close to Mach 4. And this, this can get to Mach 4. It, I don't think it can go safely beyond that too much, and it wouldn't be efficient to do so. You can see where we are on the map. We're a healthy amount away from Florida. We are flying out of Florida and trying to cross the ocean. I didn't really care where we end up on the other side because there's not going to be a runway there anyway. Uh, you know, the KSC is where it is and we don't have... Uh, I guess I could have, like... Uh, well, we're in the atmosphere. I don't think we could go to a tracking station and switch the location of the KSC and then come back. So we were basically stuck with the KSC at Cape Canaveral. Anyway, it's a little bit of a longer distance than like a New York to a London flight, for instance. So considering we're not carrying a full fuel, pay, uh, fuel load, uh, we're probably not going to make it. But I wanted to see how close we could get and how fast we could go. Now, if I really wanted to conserve fuel, I'd probably throttle back at this point. We're already basically at a cruising speed. It's not going to go any faster. It's leveled out. It's well controlled. So we could probably have cut it down to maybe half thrust, half throttle, 
and we'd end up at about Mach 3.4. You'll see later in the video I try out the various uh, throttle positions, two-thirds, one-half, to see where it would end up. And we could probably have crossed at uh, Mach 3.5 and made it. But I didn't know that at this point, and so I was pushing it all the way to see how fast I could go across the ocean. You can see 24 minutes have elapsed, but it takes a long time to get it up to speed. And a lot of the fuel is spent just getting the Concorde, you know, to, well, the, the original Concorde up to Mach 2. In this case, this Concorde up to Mach 3.9. And, yeah, that's, that's where a lot of your fuel is expended. Just to get it up to speed, I think we burned about 10 tons of fuel. And it's carrying about 35 tons, something around those lines. It can carry more, but we're not doing that. Uh, there is also a locked tank in the tail. The Concorde itself had a locked tank in the tail. They actually had to pump fuel into the tail to keep the center of mass back, and they couldn't really use that fuel. You'll see later on uh, what possible effects using that fuel has, because I ultimately do. After all, we've got sort of a different situation with these engines. Now, you'll note that I didn't put the shock cone intakes from the SR-71 because we didn't have to. You know, the intake situation is obviously just fine. And, um, yeah, I, I didn't want to ruin the Concorde look. But you, if you want to, I mean, you can make your own then. Put the shock cone intakes and everything. And it'll be all right. At the, I should mention that in Realism Overhaul, these engines are configured by the mod Advanced Jet Engines. Uh, the Rolls-Royce Snecma, the original ones that I put on the original Concorde when I built that, uh, those I actually configured myself uh, based on data. Here we are at uh, 25 kilometers altitude, and I've decided to slow down and descend a bit, and that's because of the fuel situation. So I've throttled down. We had passed the one hour mark. I think I throttled down at the one hour mark and decided to uh, go down a little bit. That turned out probably to be a bad idea. And I'm learning a few things for when I build uh, legit hypersonic transport. Hypersonic being past Mach 5, not just Mach 4. And I, want to, I wanted to use this because, uh, you know, the Concorde I had built already. I just wanted to swap in the engines and see what the flight dynamics would be crossing the ocean and eventually I'll design my own unique hypersonic uh, airliner and I don't think it'll be based on like the uh, any existing design it might you know bear some resemblance but I don't plan on imitating a particular design but here we are we're close to Africa we're definitely definitely you know more than two-thirds along but not quite there and we're running out of fuel here so I unlock the tail tank, the, you know, the reserve tank and start using that as you can see and I throttle back up to 50% and you'll see based on that what kind of velocity we can get at 50% uh, throttle so you can see we're increasing a bit and we end up at about Mach 3.4 so accelerating using half throttle we can get that much so maybe on a subsequent flight I'd do that, but then it'd take a little bit longer to cross. But here we were almost across the Atlantic in an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, so we're talking about maybe an hour and a half to cross the Atlantic, which is pretty good. I think Concorde took three hours. So it, it might have been able to go a little bit faster than that, but we're talking about cutting the Concorde time in half. This is actually the longest flight I've ever done in Realism Overhaul, uh, past one hour. It wasn't obvious to me that this will work out because Realism Overhaul occasionally does crash. This particular install has a lot of mods because it has like literally all the aircraft mods that I could make compatible with Realism Overhaul. So it's a little bit overburdened and I didn't know if like spending more than an hour in the atmosphere would have a lot of calculations, you know, fires running and everything and cause a crash or something. So this is good. It seems like we can do proper testing of hypersonic airliners in here and uh, maybe we could suggest an alternative to using something as uh, gas guzzling as a BFR for transporting passengers long distances across the earth. I think uh, I think that's a noble effort, something that we should do. It, it'll still cost more than an airliner ticket but at least you'll just have to be mildly wealthy or somewhat wealthy, well you know, wealthy to afford a ticket 
rather than actually being like a um, hundred millionaire or a billionaire. <laughs> so, you know, we, 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 it gives us all some hope that we would be able to uh, cross large distances uh, in comfort at, at high speeds. So here we are. Well, this demise of an aircraft we have seen many times from me before, uh, the splashdown. This is not going to survive in one piece as a splashdown. Uh, it just has too many parts. And worse, I don't really know what the stall speed of the craft is at this point when it's out of fuel. I sort of knew it taking off because you don't take off under the stall speed. But I didn't really know where it was here. I forgot to mention earlier that the SR-71 engines are actually lighter than the Concorde engines by a little bit. But then, you know, if you put the shock cone and all the other stuff uh, associated with the engines, I think probably the SR-71 engines are about the same. It's, it's not that much of a difference. It didn't shift the center of mass very much, actually, for the Concorde. So that's worth, worth saying, I think. It was a net thrust benefit, obviously. We got to Mach 4. And the Concorde operated... Oh, here we go. The Concorde, as I had originally built it in the original engines, operated more or less what you'd expect from the Concorde. Except for the lift. Ooh. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, some interesting gymnastics from some of our parts. This is awkward. Yeah. So I don't know what it is with the wing lift. The Concorde wing is unique. I mean, it's actually very specifically shaped. So I don't know. Maybe there's something about that that I didn't get right. I tried to follow it as closely as possible, but you never know. Okay, it's all settled down. It looks like our Kerbals will survive. Um, especially since we didn't have any Kerbals in the cabins. But yeah, lots of work to do, but not with a Concorde. I got the data I wanted from this, actually. You might consider it a successful flight, because now I, I think I have the confidence to make a hypersonic airliner. So... I'll, I'll take my time on that. I can't guarantee that I'll come up with that, like, imminently. I'll, I'll make a proper design process for it, and hopefully it won't meet the same fate as this. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.